And here it is, straight out of the oven. Well, I'll let it cool down a little bit first. Didn't want to burn my fingers. So this is the Tiny S3. This is the new Tiny board in the range using an ESP32 S3. And this particular board has eight megabytes of flash and eight megabytes of PS RAM. And that's eight megabytes on top of the 512K of SRAM already inside the ESP32 S3 chip. So as you can see, it looks kind of the same as my Tiny S2. Buttons are in a slightly different place. Obviously the Tiny S2 has flash and PS RAM inside the chip, but much less. Four megabytes of flash, two megabytes of PS RAM, we've got eight and eight. And of course, still looks similar to my Tiny Pico, which is a regular ESP32 with four megabytes of flash and four megabytes of PS RAM. Double the flash and RAM of my Tiny Pico, pin for pin compatible, except like the Tiny S2, it's got an extra pin for IO, zero, and TX and RX. You don't need to use those to actually use the board. It's got native USB. So you can see we've got a serial UART chip here, CP2104 on the Tiny Pico. They are not needed on the Tiny S2 and the Tiny S3. So, here it is. Now, that's not enough though. I mean, let's face it. We also need a Feather S3. I just built this right after I built that one. Didn't do it on video though. As you can see, Feather S3. This is kind of like my Feather S2. It's a bit different though. The Feather S3 doesn't have the second LDO, mainly because I can't get LDOs at the moment. <laughs> There's a silicon shortage, but the Feather S3 has some things that the Feather S2 doesn't. It's still 16 meg of flash and eight megabytes of PS RAM, but this has USB Sense on it, as well as VBAT Sense, so you can query the battery voltage, as well as query if there's a five volt input present, which means you can detect and change your code based on whether it's running off five volts or whether it's running off a battery. All of my boards have that now. And it's still got the ambient light sensor at the top. And of course, things wouldn't be complete unless I had my new Pro S3. As you can see, nice big logo. So this is fully compatible with the Tiny S3. As you can see, first set of 10 pins on each side. After the first 10, the pinout's slightly different but the Pro S3 has stacks more I.O. broken out. It's also got 16 mega flash and eight megabytes of PS RAM instead of the eight megabytes of flash, so more flash. It's got battery connector on top. This is a Pico Blade connector instead of the JST PH like this one. It's also got a vertical stemmer connector on it instead of the horizontal one. Obviously I can't do a horizontal one here because there's pins on the sides but as you can see from this board, it's got castellated pins. So that's why there's a battery connector on top. So you don't have to put a battery connector on the bottom, like on the Tiny S3, if you want to put a battery plugged into that rather than the VBAT pins, which means you can actually solder this to another board. It's also got, for the first time, the JTAG pins broken out. So you've got JTAG over here, the last four, and IO3, which is over here, allows you to set what JTAG mode it is on boot. So that is the lineup of my ESP32 S3 boards. These are all using final production silicon. That doesn't mean I'm going into production right now. The silicon is in short supply, very short supply, and these are still prototype boards. So when I say prototype boards, they're P1, which means that they are production boards in terms of their features, but I only got five of each done just for final testing before I commit to doing panels or boards. So I'm pretty stoked with this lineup. Finally, I've got the Pro board. I did actually design the Pro as a Pro S2, but I never actually shipped it. But dual core ESP32 S3 chip with 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5 on all of these boards. Very exciting. So I guess we need to see if they work. And there's nothing nicer than doing this. Oh, nice. So obviously that needs to be cleaned up. I'll do that later. These boards have not even been cleaned. You saw me build it. It just came out of the oven. Still got a bit of flux on it. But let's now plug it in and see if we can do a build of MicroPython for it and see if we can get it running. Hi. <laughs> so I'm at my computer now. As you can see, I've got Visual Studio Code open and I have a feed coming in. 
through my camera. I have beeped the board out to make sure there's no shorts on it, and there isn't, which is great. I don't want to plug it in and have it blue smoke, but I have not actually plugged it in yet, so I have no idea if it's going to work, but let's find out. Okay, we've got power LED, and you might not be able to see there's a flashing charge LED over here in the corner. I've actually put high resistors on the boards now to make the LEDs not as bright. I had some feedback from people that the, my LEDs were too bright. Um, no heat, that's good, great. Okay, so right now the board won't do anything. I need to put it into download mode. So that's the usual press boot, click reset and let go of boot. Or you can hold boot down when you plug it in. So now that I've done that, I should be able to do a ls slash dev slash cu dot usb star and there it is you can see usb modem 111301 now i'm on a mac if you're on linux you'd be getting uh tty dot what is it a c m zero or something like that and then obviously on windows it'll be a com port so now I know what it is. I'm currently in a branch of Git, Git status of my fork of MicroPython. As you can see here, I don't have any of my board files or anything here. I'm in a branch ARM um, board mods. Um, I have made one change to uh, machine.adc, which I haven't committed yet. Uh, for some reason, the uh, ADC2 is not enabled. I'll have to speak to Damien about why that's not the case, but we need that. So I've already made that change, but that was done a little while ago. Um, what I'm going to do is copy over a board file that I've already prepared. I'm happy to make a, a separate video about how to do that. But it's basically based off the generic S3 SPI RAM folder. I've been working on the S3 port for a little while of MicroPython and I've done several PRs and so I've actually got a generic S3 and a generic S3 SPI RAM in there that you could use for instance to build firmware for the S3 dev kit. A version that supports PS RAM and a version that doesn't. I've actually based my tiny S3 on the S3 SPI RAM because my all my boards have PS RAM on them. So I'm just going to copy that file in so you don't have to see me make it. I'll quickly show you what's inside it. Okay, so you'll see that pop up hopefully in a second. Oh, there it is. Okay, so tiny S3 and inside that, what have I got? Uh, a board.json file, don't worry about that. Uh, that's just for the new download system. I'll fill that in later. mpconfigboard.h, which basically sets up default pins for SPI for I2C. The machine DAC has been disabled for the S3 boards, and that is because for the first time, Espressive have not included any DACs inside the SP32 S3. So the S2 and the regular SP32 both have two 8 bit DACs but the S3 has no DAC at all. So if you want to do audio, other than just doing regular PWM, you need to use the I2S peripheral to do digital audio out, as opposed to using the DACs. So there's no digital to analog converters at all in the ESP32 S3. So I've got that set up. Uh, it's using the ESP32 S3 FN8, so it's got eight mega flash. My CMake file is set, so it's got base, which just is the default for ESP32. It's using native USB. It's got BLE. It's set to default to 240 megahertz and using SPI RAM. And it's going to look for an extra manifest file inside my folder. That extra manifest file will also include whatever's in boards plus whatever's in modules. And in modules, I have a helper file called tinyS3, which has got all of the default pins that I have set for the board. So VBUS Sense is on 33, VBAT Sense is on 14, the RGB LED, the data is on IO1, power is on IO2, and so forth. And then there's some helper functions in here for setting the pixel power, getting the battery voltage, getting VBUS present, and a color wheel. So that's pretty straightforward. There is also just a, an SD kconfig.board which tells it that it's using 8 megabytes of flash as you can see it with the 8 megabyte partition I'm setting the LWIP name to um, tiny s 3 uh, I'm not doing a mem test at the start because it makes the boot take longer and uh, that's pretty much it 
So I should be able to build this and deploy it. So I'm just going to clear this. To build it, I'm going to type make board equals um tiny s3. And in this case, I'm going to pass it minus J20. Now that tells it to use 20 threads. It's pretty much going to max out my CPUs. <laughs> that way I can do a build as fast as possible. But it's also going to probably affect the screen recording. We'll see what happens. Uh, hit enter. You'll probably also hear the fans start really whirring up in a moment. Like my computer's going to take off. So I've got a 10 core i9 iMac telling it to use 20 threads. It tells it to use the 10 cores plus the hyper-threading cores. And if you saw my graph right now of CPU usage, it would be completely maxed out. But who likes waiting for builds? No one. Go, go, go. Okay, that is built. So we need to flash it and to flash it, I am going to copy this and paste it. And I need to change the port, which is in brackets, to the port we're using, which is slash dev cu.usb. Should I just hit tab? Yep, good. And I don't need the board because it's using native USB which doesn't use a serial chip. So therefore, or a UART, which means it doesn't have a speed setting. Doesn't matter what, I can set the board to a million or one, it'll be the same speed, doesn't matter. So hit enter, and this should hopefully connect and flash, which it is. Go, go, go. You see it auto detected, flash size, eight megabytes. Okay, now it says here staying in bootloader. That means it's still in the CDC mode, so I need to reset the board. Hit the reset button, which will now get it out. So if I now again, let's clear the screen, do a ls slash dev slash cu dot, I'll do USB star. You can see it's changed the name. It's renumerated. It's now using, instead of the CDC, it's using the native USB. It's using tiny USB internally. So numerate says USB modem 123456 1. And I believe if I had two plugged in, it would be 61 and 62. Okay, so now if I R shell to it, minus P for the port and dev cu.usb modem, hit enter. We connected. Excellent. So go into the REPL. We have MicroPython version 1.17. Dash 223, it's a dirty build, which means it's not stable. It's whatever current mainline is. Uh, built 5th of 12th, 2021. Tiny S3 with ESP32 S3 dash FN8. Ooh, so if I import MicroPython, and then I go micropython.mem info and hit enter, we can see eight megabytes. So it's got eight megabytes of memory allocated. So by default, MicroPython will use the PS RAM, not the S RAM. So it's, we've got full eight megabytes of memory to use in MicroPython on a microcontroller. That is nuts. So what we need to do now is we've got this um, helper library. We don't actually have any code on there to run it. So I'm going to hit um, Control X to go back into I'm still in R shell, but I'm at the command prompt and I'm going to copy over a file I prepared earlier. It's just the tiny S2 code, but it's referencing tiny S3 instead of tiny S2. So copy um, users Xeon tiny S3 example.py. I hope it works. And pi board, when you do slash pi board, that means whatever the board is that's plugged into the computer. So I'm going to copy it there, but I'm going to call it main.py because we want it to get called when it boots. So copy that over 
and we're going to go back in the REPL and I'm going to do a soft reset, which is control D. And hopefully we'll see some information on the screen and we'll see the RGB LED cycle. Control D, soft reboot. And there we go. So we've got a cycling RGB LED. And so we've got soft reboot, hello from Tiny S3. We have eight megabytes of memory. We have, okay, six megabytes of flash left after everything that's on there. Uh, battery voltage is 1.09 and that is because um, there's no battery plugged in right now and I've actually not set it to use the correct resistors that I put on this board. Should be detecting uh, 4.2 volts by default and VBUS sense, VBUS uh, 5 volts is present. We have a working board. We have MicroPython on it and we have a spinning RGB LED, which I know talk about overkill for an sb 32 s 3 but the board works. Okay, how cool was that? I have a working Tiny S3 and it is the final revision and I'm able to go into the least PCB production for those. The Pro S3 and the Feather S3, I don't believe there's gonna be any issues with those either. I'll keep working on MicroPython builds for those just to be able to test them. There is one small change that I've already made on the silk screen for the Feather S3. I made a mistake and I had two of the labels on the wrong spot. The actual hardware is correct, just the labels were wrong. So that's already been fixed and ready to go when I send off for production boards. Now, it's not gonna be anytime soon. So if anyone's hanging out for a Tiny S3, a Pro S3 or a Feather S3, well, there's just no silicon around. I do have some silicon. I can actually build a short run production of the Pro S3 and the Feather S3, but I don't have enough silicon to do Tiny S3, unfortunately. So who knows how long it's gonna take. I'm in the queue to get some more silicon, but uh, I've been warned it could be quite a while, like next year sometime, hopefully earlier than later. But still, super cool. I've got the boards ready and uh, the best birthday present today so far. The fact is there's really no hurry because there's no Arduino support yet and the IDF support is still early. It's still, 4.4 uh, is still a dev branch. I'm sure it's gonna take many, many more months to get the S3 fully done and stable. And MicroPython is there, it's usable now, but it's still early. I'll put a lot of effort into getting it to where it is, but I'm sure there's still more work to do and I haven't tested everything. I've not even tried Bluetooth yet, so there's a lot more work to do there. CircuitPython is not there yet, but I believe S3 support was actually just merged into mainline yesterday or the day before, which means um, they're hoping to have early S3 support in 7.2 but 7.2 hasn't even had an alpha release yet, so it's still very, very early. But uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, there'll be CircuitPython and MicroPython and IDF soon, and then Arduino sometime in the future. And of course, it's gonna take, you know, four months, six months for full support to come out on all the different platforms. So early adopters, yep, jump in if you want to, but yeah, <laughs> there's gonna be a, a bit of a wait, just like there was with the S2. Okay, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you later. Bye.